So to learn to play this study like every other right hand solo study in this set, I would recommend shifting over to right around here so that the right arm has all this freedom and you know if you're sitting in the middle sometimes reaching over down here is a little bit uncomfortable so most people who play a single hand piano repertoire shift this way for the right hand or this way for the left hand anyway um, so in this study the uh, whole idea is to master different parts of the right hand and really be on top of all positions in which uh, you will be playing for instance in the beginning fourth and fifth fingers are playing the melodic line on top the bottom fingers are playing the accompaniment and what you'll see quickly happen is that coming up I have some black keys which I'll have to play right here and immediately I like to start in this kind of position not this but this right a little bit of pedal there I, I don't care about specific pulse as long as it is, it's a cantabile uh, kind of uh, sound smooth and not rushed um, but the important thing is if you had my uh, let's analyze a different way of playing it so right so the difference there was I had to move all the way inside the keyboard like this to start playing the uh, on the black keys whereas if I start like this and then I can come out so I like to avoid these kinds of unnecessary in and out movements on the keyboard but there is a trade-off the trade-off is it's pretty hard to articulate fourth finger so deep inside the key so you can decide what you what works better for you but that's my preference now here of course i have to play um uh, you know this kind of chord in measure six there and you'd think that it's a good idea to come back out this is much more comfortable than to do this yeah and to a certain extent I would agree but then we're talking about degrees because if I go all the way out then look at that G sharp in measure 7 again this inward motion of the arm required to reach the G sharp and so it might be a good idea to come out a little bit maybe halfway out and then as I get to measure 7 my position allows me to reach G sharp rather co comfortably so that's the kind of thing I, I tend to teach which is think about the hand positions not just in terms of which fingers go on which keys but exactly where on the keys and where inside or outside on the edge of the keyboard you place that hand so we continue notice that's the position we, you want to prepare in measure six well actually starting in measure five and you have right here on that second beat of measure five you really want to feel those five fingers shape in this specific uh, collection of keys now here measure seven right away I want to feel a G sharp now a little bit of thumb jump in action no pedal of course so we continue here and then it's basically 
a restatement of the main theme slightly shifted up the degrees now notice again I'm making sure that my thumb stays close to the black keys right and as I come off of that F notice the fifth finger motion towards the F sharp That's what you want to practice if you want to master a kind of a smooth cantabile sound on this piece. Uh, and that's another thing I teach, which is advanced preparation of positions whenever possible. All right, same thing with the thumb. As soon as I'm off of that A natural, it's right there on the A flat waiting to play that note. And we continue. Right, so the position it forces me to prepare the uh, fourth and fifth fingers, first and second fingers. But what about the, the third finger? Where should that rest? Well, in a way, the answer comes up in this measure 13, I guess, that three is on E, right? But you're not going to hold the fingers like this. It's just not natural. There is no reason for it. So. In measure 12, right on that F sharp, I would start reaching, I would start planning for this transition. I'm going to play three on E. Um, I don't need to do it yet, but as my fingers one and two are articulating through A flat and C there, I really want to be aware of this third finger motion over this hump, which is the E flat, and being sort of in the vicinity of being able to play the E when the time comes, right? So here we go. Now, of course, I can be using the pedal there, but when I'm figuring out the fingers, I don't necessarily want to worry about uh, the, the pedal doing something as well, but with the pedal, it's nice round sound and then as soon as I I'm ready and I need to I start playing E F sharp E G now of course besides E F sharp needs to get finger four on top of it and G needs to get finger five on top of that now coming up finger one has to play the G same thing notice that so far I'm forcing myself to you know, learn the skill of playing inside the keys because sometimes it's essential and if you're always doing that, it's not necessarily the optimal way to make your way through uh, passages and piano works. So in this case, I would encourage that kind of approach. Unless absolutely necessary, keep your thumb close to the black keys at all time. So uh, starting from that F sharp at the beginning of the screen, um, F sharp, right? So I actually forgot what finger it is. I'm still playing with finger five on the F sharp. Oops. Oops. Right, and finger three, I didn't quite prepare it. It was still holding onto E flat, so let's try to do it better. That's better. And now. As I leave A flat and I play that final C on beat one, all those fingers get in place. And then immediately the thumb gets into place. And then here, finger four is already on F sharp, but the reach of the five ahead of time is extremely important. Right, as soon as I play that C and E, in fingers one and two, sorry, two and three, that's when that slight shift occurs. And then, of course, as soon as I get to A, it's not written, but it's implied that I've got four, five, four, three. So again, an another little micro shift like that. So from that measure 14, let's advance a little bit. Keep 
we get some iron fingers. Yes, so finger uh, five on that G in measure 14. And then finger four is right around F sharp. As soon as I hit the, the third beat, C and E together, that position shift occurs. And there it is. So a couple of micro position shifts that are not really necessary, necessarily hard, but unless you are aware of them and you practice doing them, this spot will feel awkward and maybe stuttery if you're trying to play it at, at, in tempo. Right, so those three or so steps. Uh, if you're finding it hard to coordinate, um, I like to do the backwards practice approach and there's going to be another video just on that at some point. But in, in a nutshell, start at the end. You need to be in this position eventually, right? Five, four, three. That's where you need to be. Well, what's the step before that? The step before that is finger four is on that F sharp, reaching towards the A, and then you slide into position, right? So I will pl be playing something like this and then stopping right away to make sure that I'm landing into this position. Once I've mastered that one step at the end of my uh, backward uh, practice segment, all right? This is my goal, this is where I want to stop. I'm, I'm going to back up one more. I'm gonna to have to hold this after playing it. Then I'm going to have to play this F sharp. Then I'm going to have to move into, into that final position in measure 15, so I'm going to hold this, I'm going to work on playing this F sharp, playing the A, and stop in, in, in the right position, so uh, check this out. Right, so now, now I have two micro position adjustments. From here I do this, and then this. Two little steps. And then of course you can start from G, you're holding the G, you're stretching out to where you can, and then you're playing C and E. All right, so now three steps. Play the C and E, release the G, play the F sharp, shift position slightly, then get to, to the A. Now, if you're finding that this is easy and you are playing it perfectly right from the get-go, then of course you don't need to practice. But if you have trouble, then that would be the approach to practice a tricky a spot like this and any other similar or even harder spots in any other passage. All right, so let's go on measure 15. Of course, not forgetting to put the thumb on B uh, natural ahead of time. Now notice that I'm not trying to squeeze this uh, second finger over to C sharp right away. That puts too much strain on uh, the entire hand. And so I'm keeping the, the second finger resting naturally on E flat or D sharp if you prefer. But as soon as I get to F sharp with finger three, I'm making sure that I'm actively shifting the second finger over to C sharp ahead of time. So right there F sharp, that's the finger motion. There it is. And then I can play my left... Uh, <laughs> I want to say my left hand part because that's where it's written, but of course I'm still using my right hand. So bottom fingers of the right hand playing the left hand part, traditional left hand part. And same thing, I would not use the pedal here since I'm asking for specific articulation. Um, I apologize that you've sort of, you, you don't see the position of my uh, head at this point in this cam. Well, I can kind of shift a little bit, but this is what happens. I'm so far to the left side of the keyboard that um, you can't really see where I'm centered, uh, which key I'm centered against off. Right, and then right on that F sharp, um, let's move it like, like this. As soon as I hit it, I want a new position. And again, two, three, that's easy to prepare. But that fifth finger, 
aiming towards the D in measure 18, I wouldn't force anybody unless you have a very big, uh, long fingers, big hand, to try to do this sort of position. I would say go as far as you comfortably can with finger five, pointing towards the D, but you can stop right around C sharp perhaps, so that what happens is you play the F sharp, G, F sharp, and then in measure 18, as you're holding that final F sharp in measure 17, you're consciously, you know, reaching towards the D, finally. Right, so the final F sharp is where you adjust the position slightly to move the uh, fifth finger over D, uh, but not too far because you can go really far, right? And that's not necessary. And the reason it's not necessary is, of course, immediately in measure 18, we have to play C sharp with the one. And so I'm pretty deep inside the keys again with my fingers two and three. I'm making that slight adjustment to grab the D in, in this interesting, uh, I don't know what kind of angle you would call it. I guess this is zero and that, that would be 90, so what, 50? Um, and as soon as I grab it at this 50 degree angle, my, my first finger, the thumb, is right there on top of C sharp. The pedal is down. Now, if some of you are finding it hard, if your hand is smaller, shorter fingers, I would not even worry about holding onto that D. Use the pedal and, and let go. Right, and just take care of these lower notes with the thumb and the second finger. But always, always anchoring that second finger on F sharp so that you're always able to go back and forth, back and forth around this, what I like to call anchor point or pivot point um, around which everything seems to rotate, or revolve. I'm, I'm not quite sure um, the, of the right technical term. Um, my physical therapist says that these motions are called deviations. So you can have ulnar deviation, radial deviation, depending on which bone your wrist moves towards. So, okay, deviate around F sharp. Right, so again, mi very minor thing, but if you're working through this and you really want to master it, make sure that as soon as you start playing measure 19, right, you're not keeping that fourth finger on A natural. You really want to make sure to bring it out and place it on top of A sharp right away. And if, again, if you're, let's say you're just playing through starting measure 18. And you're finding yourself playing like this. You're all the way through measure 19, you're about to play measure 20, and you're still resting your fourth finger on the A natural. That will be a problem if you want to have confident, secure kind of playthrough uh, performance. And so, same thing as, as I mentioned earlier in the video, you might want to do this backwards practice, again, in a very quick nutshell. You need to be here, right? And you need to be there as you play measure 19, two, three, two. And this is not the comfortable position, that's more comfortable. But that's wrong because then you have to worry about this. Now you can do it, but I like to uh, teach this idea of advanced preparation because in some pieces, yes, even if you don't advance prepare, no problem, you can still make it. But the harder pieces, harder passages, that becomes essential. And so in, even in a slower, easier piece, that practice of advanced preparation I find very, very important. So put it here, play like this, right? You don't even have to go on and play the measure 20 because as, as soon as you're in that position, you know you can definitely, definitely play it. But getting there from here is what we want to teach our finger to do. And so we're holding the B on the downbeat of measure 19. We're ready to play F sharp and G with fingers two and three. And what I want to do is as soon as I play F sharp on, um, on the second beat with finger two, I move like this. 
So one more time. I'm holding the B and I'm about to play the F sharp. So you see a couple of things happen. I kind of deviated uh, my uh, wrist or my hand and uh, I made sure to place that fourth finger on A sharp and I stopped to check that. It's not good to do this. And then kind of keep playing and not making sure that you're in position. Just literally stop and check to make sure that you, you've done it. You really have. I'm holding the B, beat one, or past beat one, b before beat two, and I'm about to play beat two and I'm going to move. Boom. That's what you want to, to do and you want to do it without much thinking. Which means when you first practice a piece like that, you definitely want to be thinking and you want to do a lot of conscious kind of effort to uh, practice a new move, a, a new uncomfortable move. Right? That's what you want to do. And then, you know, you back up to, let's say, beat four of measure 18. Um, right. You're holding that F sharp. You're reaching towards the B. Um, you might already want to squeeze that third finger down if you're finding yourself naturally wanting to do that because of course you have to play g natural not g sharp so do that hold the f sharp on beat four get ready to play the b natural on beat one and then get all the way to that stopping point on beat two of measure 19. so one more time Right, and you might have pedal as well. You're holding it down. So one more time. Holding the F sharp on beat four. Getting ready to play B natural on beat one with finger one. Third finger is pointing to G natural, not G sharp. Be making sure you've got all of this ready. You then continue. One, two. And then on two, you stop and you check that you have this proper position. Again, remember in measure 20, I will be playing my thumb on the C sharp. So you want to be pretty close, if not right on top of it. You definitely don't be doing that, right? That's wrong. That's really not what you want to be practicing. Yes, two, three, four, five are ready, comfortably so, but look at the thumb. So always anticipate what's coming up. How can you best adjust your position to compromise on all fronts. Right? That's how you want to land in measure 20. Sorry, moved it a little bit further. So measure 20, four, five and four, pretty uncomfortable. I'm still keeping the third finger on G, not here. Same thing, if you've got a smaller hand and Holding this and then pressing this down is too much. Just use the pedal. Hold and let go. But what you don't want to do is to leave that F sharp G pivot point, the anchor point. All right, so let's continue. Now here, right between measure 21 and 22, of course, a very important transition. Finger three on G has to instantly clear that G sharp hurdle, place itself on the A natural. So same thing, that's where you need to be. Here is the F sharp, past beat four. What's tricky is beat three, let me just back right up to beat three there. G, finger three, you're pointing towards the D with five, right, not quite there. You're about to play the beat four F sharp, boom. That's what you want to practice. So G held down with three, boom. That's that's the move, right? Then you can definitely play measure 22. And again, not too much because then thumb is way, way far away from the C sharp. So that's too slow. So I'm on, right there on G. That's what I want to do. And the thumb is right here. Now here definitely leave off of uh, your A natural because I think unless you have Rachmaninoff sized hands, doing that is just a little 
too much. Now you, you can try it. See, see if you feel comfortable because that definitely will allow you to more easily find your way back to that A natural in measure 23. But I think that if you hit this A down here while feeling the G sharp under your third finger, so not quite the perfect pivot where we're feeling the A natural all the time. But, you know, I'm right next to it. All I have to do is slide back down that little uh, canyon between a G sharp and A sharp, and I'm back to where I need to be. So definitely, I, th I think there is time and place to exert extra effort and have, you know, sort of extra stretch which feels a bit uncomfortable but if you don't have to do it you don't have to do it right so downbeat of measure 23 i've got the a with the thumb i'm on g sharp with finger three and i am very comfortably able to slide back to a natural with finger three on the second beat of 23. okay where are we Right, and as soon as I do that, I make sure to put the thumb on D. That's a pretty tricky roll. You'd probably want to clear the pedal a little bit, just so it's, it's a little less dirty. Right, so we, we get rid of that A natural sound, but I wouldn't worry about it too much. Because the last thing you want to do is do this, right, where there's that obvious gap between the A melody note and the E melody note. So experiment with pedal until you feel happy with how uh, that transition goes. Now same thing here, as I'm about to approach the roll, the natural thing, uh, tendency for the second finger will be to probably rest on G natural. So you want to force it up to G sharp. Right, and that's the kind of roll. So, and just enough to get the E comfortably. But again, not too much. That's too much. Um, well, even that is okay, because luckily for us in measure 25 there, uh, when the thumb has to play its note, it's E, which we can reach right here on the edge of the white key, because that's a white key. Therefore, here, this sort of <laughs> more comfortable position adjustment for the fifth finger is perhaps warranted. So, and then as soon as you play the E, fifth finger moves over to C sharp. And as soon as you play the B natural with finger four there, in measure 25, boom, right? The first finger moves over to D. So uh, let's keep going. Now notice again what I'm doing very <laughs> sneakily. I can play this E here. There is no reason to always play inside as I mentioned before, but um, uh, you might decide to do that too. I'm absolutely fine with you saying, you know what, I quite like to always play inside the keys because when my thumb needs to play um, on the black key, it's right there. So. Right, so you can actually play the E natural here in measure 25 as opposed to here. That's fine too. But if you decided to do this way. You definitely need to make sure that during measure 26, you do that, right? So uh, I guess deviate your uh, wrist back out all to the ulnar <laughs> side so that the thumb starts to play D like this, in right next to the black keys. Same thing here, you have a very tricky uh, 
it's not tricky in that it's Im it's impossibly hard but just it's not a natural thing that you'll want to do so measure 27 right so you're still in the same position you've all you did was shift fingers one and two from d and g over to c sharp and f sharp that's not too hard you're, you're going to do it as you play uh, B natural on the last beat of measure 26, right? You're, going, you're just going to do this. And if you're not doing this, do, do practice with this backwards approach that I kind of went over quickly earlier in the video. Just make sure that as you play the B, this shift definitely does occur, right? So that, that's one thing. But then as you play measure 27, first of all on beat 2, notice what happened. Yeah, I made sure that I'm not resting in this position from before. I'm anticipating that finger 5 on beat 3, so that. Not just finger 5, of course, also finger 4, which gets onto A. And for right now, I'm letting my third finger naturally rest on this G sharp, right? But that has to happen. So on B2, as I play F sharp with finger two, the whole thing shifts over. But then little adjustments start to happen as I anticipate measure 28. And the only real adjustment I would encourage you to make is as you play finger five, on beat three, you slide the thumb down to C. Like this. But then, after I play the downbeat of measure 28, uh, like this, I'm going to do this. Right, so fingers two and three definitely have to use this moment to swing over. So lots of little micro adjustments, and they are necessary because unless you do them smoothly and more or less automatically, it's going to be a reason for either tension, nervousness during performance, or uh, or just straight ahead slowdowns and uh, lack of cantabile. Let's put it this way. Uh, so here we go. Measure twenty eight down downbeat. As I play the B, fingers two and three are right here. Now because I have the pedal. I'm not going to hold that B natural with my fifth finger for those three beats. That's showing the necessary sound of the B natural, kind of in a typical romantic piano uh, notation style, where it's not about how the fingers hold the key, it's about how the sound, how the melody works. The B continues until A. at least in terms of duration, rhythmic duration. So definitely what happens is, as I play the D sharp, F sharp pair on B3, I let go of that, of that B natural and reposition the fifth finger on the A natural. Not only that, I also make sure to position the G uh, or fourth finger on G natural and the thumb on the B, because that's what's coming up in measure 29. Right, so that beat three with the two sharps, that's, that's a big moment of transition. Lots of things happening. Right. And again, if you're finding it hard to do, do the backwards thing. Start at the end, start at the goal. Here is five, G has to be covered with four, one is on top of B, two is on E of course. Make sure that's your position by beat four, your stopping point, your checkpoint. And then before that beat four, you're going to be holding the D sharp and F sharp on beat three with fingers two and three. and. You want to make sure finger five is on what? A natural, uh, G is on top there with four, uh, thumb is on B. All of these things are already done 
and and as you play the a the only thing that really has to happen is slight adjustment of maybe the wrist but that the d sharp two moves to e natural that's all that you want to check that's after d sharp d sharp f sharp you're playing the a natural with five and that's what you want to see happen yeah that's all nothing else now before that you're going to be holding c on b2 probably still holding the b right and this might be very tricky you have to do a lot of things after you hit the d sharp and f sharp on b3 notice i'm holding the pedal down Ooh, just realized that i forgot to turn on my pedal indicator on this video well never mind you can hear by the sound alone um, that um, the pedal is down right so maybe the goal shouldn't be all the way to beat four with finger five but really before beat four right so where you're holding the C, d sharp f sharp on b3 you're past b3 you've already pressed it down and you're simply checking am i in position to play a on uh, finger five on a finger four on g finger uh one on b the only thing you're you're cannot have ready yet is finger two on e so maybe that's the better stopping point so hold here check these positions very very important whoops i keep screwing up that's where you want to freeze you're still holding the d sharp f sharp it's kind of the way i achieved this uh, position uh, transition bit of that ulnar deviation in my wrist basically shift in my uh, forearm a little bit while keeping it parallel to the keys or along the line of the keys there it is anyway so I'm, I'm pointing out what seems to be so obvious but it's very important because sometimes people have trouble with passages and it doesn't seem hard but all these micro adjustments are not happening and as the result not the overall the passage doesn't work and so you kind of struggle with it so yeah so same thing i'll just rush through it a little quicker make sure to to position b flat and d in measure 30 ahead of time so on and so forth and then we're kind of approaching the DC Alcoda. I'm changing to finger four. I'm changing to finger five. And I'm making sure to stay right next to the th uh, black keys with the thumb. Now there is um, a rallentando that's in my uh, original uh, score, which got cut off here. So on, on in beat, uh, sorry, in my measure 32, we're slowing down a little bit. Right, and here, it's a pretty tricky technique. You hold the C and the other fingers slide inward from the black keys. And with this dominant harmony, you go all the way back. You're basically in position, slight adjustment as you go back to measure one. And you play the whole thing obviously i'm not going to go through that i'm going to go to the coda right here and we have a quick and i'll remember these adjustments of the second third fingers right and the final line I have to go, so enjoy. <laughs> 